Okay, so today we're working on the normal distribution, and sometimes we have to do normal, and sometimes we have to do inverse normal. And so let's consider this problem here. We have chest measurements of 18-year-old footballers are normally distributed with a mean of 95 and a standard deviation of 8. So I'm going to introduce my random variable x is the normal distribution with a mean of 95 and the standard deviation squared variance of 8. I want to find the percentage of footballers with chest measurements between 87 and 103. So that means I'm looking for the probability that it's between 87 and 103. And if I draw my quick sketch, here's my 95. So 87 is over here, 103 is here, and I'm looking for that value there. Now, 8 is a standard deviation, 95 plus 8 is 103, 95 minus 8 is 87. So this is one standard deviation and one standard deviation, so it should be approximately 68% just by estimating. If I use my calculator to do this, I go second variables, normal CDF, and I'm going to go from 87 to 103. 95 is the mean, and 8 is a standard deviation. And when I do that, I end up with 0 0.683 to say three significant figures. And this is just an estimate from the empirical rule, um, and it helps us to make sure we're on the right track. Okay, B part then says we have our normal curve here, here 95. It says, estimate the chest measurements of footballers that comprise the largest 2.5% of chest sizes. Well, what that's saying is I want to find this value here, K, where this area is 2.5%. And so I'm looking for the probability that X is bigger than K, which is 0.025. Well, this is clearly going backwards. I know the area. I'm looking for the value that will make this area, which is different than A. I had my values and I found the area. So I did normal CDF here. So here I'm going to have to do inverse norm when I am given the area. So when I do inverse norm, if I go second distributions, number three is inverse norm. And if I know my area, well, the way the calculator works, it always goes from left to right. The calculator always finds the area from this side. So my area is going to be 1 minus 0 0.025. Hopefully it will do that. My mean I know is 95. My standard deviation is 8. And so it tells me that K is equal to 110.68, so approximately 111 to centimeters, my units, to three significant figures. Now, I could have also done this if I went to inverse norm. If I would have called the mean zero and my standard deviation of one, the value here I would have gotten, then what this value here, this is going to be 1.95, well, 6, 0. This here is my Z score from the, from the standardized normal. And so if I went 1.96 is equal to K, the value I'm looking for, minus 95 divided by 8, this will also then produce a value of 111 centimeters. So if you have to find the z-score, you can still also do that with inverse normal. And finally, what is the chest measurements of 40% of 18-year-olds that, what is the chest measurement that 40% of 18-year-olds fall under? Well, if I'm going to consider doing this, I'm going to consider doing this. Well, what it means is I have a normal curve. Here's my 95. Here's 40% is this area here, under 
fall under. So this is my 40%. I'm looking for some value k. So the probability that x is less than k is equal to 0 0.4. And so again, I'm going to go inverse normal. And this is going to be 0 0.4, the 95, and the 8. And I can see that k then is equal to 93.0 centimeters to three significant figures. So inverse normal and normal. If I'm given a normal distribution, I'm always given a value. And that value produces an area or a probability. Then we use normal CDF. If in the problem I'm given an area or a probability, because those are synonymous in this case, then I, and I want to produce a value, then I use inverse norm. So area to value is inverse. Value to area is just the regular normal CDF.